five ninety. That looks expensive, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But m most of it is guaranteed back to me. If we if we uh, add the two of these together, we get a sum of thirty six sixty one. But see, I've got a thirty five dollar put, which gives me the right, not the obligation, but the right to sell that stock at thirty five if something disastrous happens. Mm -hmm. So the 161 that's the difference, that's the only amount that's at risk. 161 divided by 3661 is single-digit risk. Look at that. We've got 4.4% at risk and yet an unlimited profit potential. Now, Mike, uh, added to this, we can do other things, right? I mean, we can sell uh, the uh, uh, calls against it, for example, that are in the near term mm -hmm. and, and dissolve some of that risk. For example, uh, uh, the put that we looked at was a September put, but we could sell the June 35s for 90 cents and then take out half the risk. All right, this is one of several different income methods. So that's possibility number two is we can uh, take away even the risk that we have at the front end using different income method strategies. And, and uh, we've got 10 of them. All right, mm -hmm. uh, selling cover calls is pretty commonly known, so I give that away for free, but there's 10 different adjustments. We're going to show another one a little bit later. Okay? Um, I'm going to ask folks, uh, w which of these would you rather know? <laughs> because we've got a limited amount of time. <laughs> would you like to know how to bulletproof a stock before an earnings announcement? Uh, would you like to know how to make money on a stock even if you're wrong about its direction? Or would you like to make money even if you're wrong more often than you're right? And uh, Mike, let's just kind of look at the first few answers and, and decide which of these three we want to do. Got a couple of folks writing in. Um, I'm still going through some of the other questions. I gotta I gotta go back down here and go th scroll through uh, everything. Pete says bulletproof. Tom says number three. Um, oh, jeez, all three, Jim. <laughs> um, <laughs> All number right. one is Imran, number three, number three, one and two, three, two, number one, two, uh, two, um, number one. I, I don't know what you want to do here, Kurt. Seems okay, pretty even all over the board. Okay, here's what we're going to do, okay? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make good on the promises. We've already said, we've already shown how a married put can be superior uh, to a... Uh, call options mathematically, okay? Um, so I want to go ahead and uh, we'll show how to bulletproof before an earnings announcement, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. While, while I'm calling up that particular deal, I'm going to uh, launch another poll, okay? Let's think about that. Are you, are you happy with your trading results from last year? Let's think about that question again, but let's pose it a little differently. If you had kept your losses down to single digits, say 5 6%, but also kept your gains, would that have changed your answer? Okay, and while that's uh, happening, Mike, I'll go ahead and pull up the, uh, uh, the presentation that shows uh, spread trades after the fact, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, this is pretty, pretty intense. If you kept your losses to 6% or less, but kept your gains also, would you have answered differently? And my comment, how many, uh, what was the percentage of folks that said yes before I'm happy with my trading? That, oh, shoot, I think it was 16%, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, you know what? We've actually had a flip-flop. Let me go ahead and share the results. It would go the other way. <laughs> We'd have almost everyone happy with their trading, 84%, and then 16 uh, less satisfied. 66% <clears throat> would have said, yes, I'm happy with my trading results. Uh, that's a little bit better than 16, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And 19% say, uh, I would have still said no, but been closer to yes. All right, and then 16% would have still said no. Now, that looks like it adds up to 100, 101%, but I think... Uh, I think that's because of rounding off uh, in the uh, bull feature, okay? But, uh, Mike, uh, let's, let's put a dollar amount to that, and then I'll go ahead and share income method number three, okay? Let's, let's put a, a dollar amount on that, okay? If you look back over the last year, and if you limited your losses whenever you did have a loss down to 6% of that particular trade, 
or less. On the other hand, uh, you're able to keep your gains. Would how much would that have changed your overall picture? Interesting. So far, nobody has answered that they can't see how forced position sizing could even help them. Nobody said that. So I'm thinking the 16% that wouldn't have been happy with their trade, and they just wouldn't have been happy enough, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Let me go ahead and share these results. Mike, uh, the lion's share, 62%, would have saved or made $5,000 or more if they only had the, the free information that we've given away today, a year ago. All right. Listen, folks, uh, I actually got a lot of thank you letters in October and November last year. And the reason was that while... Uh, mutual funds were down 40, 50 percent. Folks that were following my methods were down single digits. They were down four or five percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, and guess what they were doing at the bottom? Like they were buying. Right. And without fear, without fear, because they knew that uh, uh, they had an unlimited upside potential position, and yet very little at risk, single digit risk. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and hide that, and uh, we're going to show that adjustment. One way of becoming bulletproof before an earnings announcement. Okay, now what the problem is with stock trading is that you don't know what's going to happen next, right? I mean, there's on this uh, uh, chart, there's plenty of places to buy or sell and make a profit, all right? But the problem is that we don't know what's going to happen next. And honestly, if we could know what was going to happen next, then there wouldn't be a market, all right? It mm -hmm. would be priced in, okay? So uh, bulletproofing is. <clears throat> the uh, the nomenclature that I use when your cost basis is less than what the strike of your put is, okay? When your cost basis is less than what the strike of your put is, then you're bulletproof. And, uh, and you can be bulletproof and your stock can continue to go up. Well, uh, one way to achieve that, of course, Mike, is to sell short-term calls against a long-term married put. And that's actually, we've got a lot of copycats out there that are now catching on and showing that. Uh, I've been teaching the married put and adjustments to it since 2002. And very recently, we've had a whole lot of folks, probably uh, folks uh, that, are, that are here today have been to some of these presentations. They usually do them in the evenings. Um, but uh, Mike, we're going to show something completely different. Okay, This doesn't involve selling calls at all. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I've done income method number three. I call this income method three. I've done income method three recently, but I like to show this research in motion example. And the reason for that is that research in motion gapped down uh, about three or uh, four months ago. Mm -hmm. It had a gap down, overnight gap of 35, 40%. Just, you know, one day it's trading at. Oh, I don't know. I think it was trading at 90, and the next day it was trading at 55 or something. Right. Ridiculous. Okay, but let's go ahead and, and take a look here at Research in Motion. This is an actual real dollar trade that I did. Uh, I picked up Research in Motion at $84.04 a share. At the same time, Mike, if I were doing the, the covered call strategy, that day I could have sold the October $85 call. And now, is that consistent with what most of the gurus are teaching about selling covered calls? Yeah, I mean, we're in September. You might not want to sell the September call because it's too short term. Look out to October. And as we saw with that ATM bell curve, we want to keep the strike price close to at the money potentially because that not only that gives us a good uh, time premium, the highest time premium available on the chain, uh, but it also gives us a slightly better probability than selling a far out of the money call. That's right. Okay. Now, here's what would happen when you when you do income methods, and I, I consider selling a call an income method because it's done in a credit. All right. When you do an income method, you reduce the cost basis, right? Mm -hmm. So your cost basis on your stock would be seventy seven ninety four, and then of course if the stock goes up, you deliver it at eighty five. All right. So you make the profit. The the difference is a profit, seven dollars and six cents. Now, $7.06 out of seventy seven ninety four. dollars that's pretty healthy, isn't it? It's approaching mm -hmm. 10%. It's like about a 9% profit. Okay, But, Mike, that isn't what I did. I did income method number 